All American Trophies for all your screen printing and embroidery needs. Artmain, offering custom frames, art supplies, and jewelry. Buffalo Wings and Rings, a sports restaurant experience located in South Minot. Badlands Bar and Grill, located on 31st Avenue in Minot. Beyonce, with all your prom and bridal needs, located in downtown Minot. KCJB 910 AM, Minot's news and information station. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, sports. KIZZ FM Z94, playing today's hit music. Mix 99.9, .9, Minot's music mix. Happy Joe's Pizza and Ice Cream, serving the Midwest since 1972. KRRZ, 1390 AM, Minot's classic hits. KZPR 105.3 FM, Minot's rock station. Jacobson Music, bringing music to the Northern Plains since 1980. KYYX, Kicks 97.1, bringing Minot country since 1977. MSU Beavers Hockey, online info at msubeavers.com. Qdoba, easy, on time, full of flavor. MSU Theater Department, year-round entertainment. Forward Communication, connecting professionals in the Midwest. MSU Bookstore, for all your campus needs. The Red and Green, MSU's student-run newspaper. Magic City Hoagies, locally owned sandwich shop located in Southwest Minot. Spicy Pie, pizza, grinders, beer. The Minot Masonic Lodge, good men working to be better. Taco John's, offering fresh tacos, burritos, nachos, and breakfast. Drive-In Financial, connecting faith and finances. PMQ Entertainment, performing at weddings, proms, and dances. The Pursuit, creating a place in Minot where everyone is welcome. Mouse River Players, community theater since 1971. H Bar B Construction, for all your oil field needs. Welcome to this week's episode of Inside Out. I'm Lane Sarston. And I'm Riley Boyce. Today we've got a uh, little bit of theater type theme. Uh, is going to be having some information on the Shakespeare Fest going on here at M MSU. Yep, I have Jen Clean from the zoo talking about Party for the Planet that will happen this Sunday. And I'm going to have Ryan Fila, one of the actors in Much Ado About Nothing. That's opening up tonight, folks. It's going to be a two-week show, so we're going to have two weekends to go see it. Ooh, are you going to go tonight? Not tonight, but next week. Oh, okay. And we have Blake Fries with sports. Yeah, and inside of that sports segment, we're going to be seeing Kyler Sharp. He's got Coach uh, Yule for the baseball squad. They've been doing amazing. And then Hannah Davis will wrap up with amazing news for weather. Yeah, I'm looking forward to some of that amazing weather news. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, Taylor, uh, can you tell me a little bit more about this Shakespeare Fest? I don't exactly know a whole lot about what's going to be happening. Yeah, it's the third annual Shakespeare Fest. There's going to be actually not just the play. They're going to be showing a, a film, and there's actually going oh. to be a community dialogue where they're going to invite uh, members of the community, students, to talk about what's exactly happening with Shakespeare now in 2018. So, oh, sounds yeah. like a lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah. You might think of Shakespeare as outdated, but this year it will get an updated look. 
The third annual Shakespeare Fest will be taking place over the next week on MSU's campus. One of the events during Shakespeare Fest is the production of Much Ado About Nothing, directed by Eileen Davidson Smith. The play will feature contemporary music and costumes. It debuts tonight at 7.30 p.m. at Alshire Theatre. A campus and community dialogue will also be held during the festival. The dialogue will be a discussion of what a higher education should look like in the 21st century. Presenters are MSU faculty member Dan Kahn and radio host Rob Port. Christina Paxman is the moderator. MSU Shakespeare Fest runs today through the 28th. MSU Alumni Association's Board of Directors are hosting their 35th annual gala on Friday. The evening includes silent and live auctions and a dinner. Net proceeds of the event fund scholarships and programs by the Alumni Association. In 34 years, the group has raised more than $1 million from the gala. For more information, contact Jana McKechnie at 701-858-3373. The Suris Valley Animal Shelter takes in an average of 75 animals each month. For the past 12 years, they have held an evening to pause gala to raise money for their day-to-day -day operations to take care of those pets. Hannah Davis checked in to see how they are preparing for the big event. The Suris Valley Animal Shelter strives to improve the lives of both animals and people and they need your help to get the job done. It was an event that started small, and we noticed how successful it was, but not only being successful for the monetary donations, but also looking at, we share a lot of information about pets that are available for adoption, sharing stories, and just really getting the name out of what the shelter does. Along with providing a haven for surrendered, lost, and stray animals, this no-kill shelter provides services like microchipping, pet therapy, and humane education. This event raises the money to allow the shelter to continue continue those services. We reach out to communities and businesses and just general members who support the shelter and so all types of packages, anything from spa packages to different gift cards for local restaurants. There is a little something for everyone to enjoy. It's a fun event and it's an opportunity for people to get together and really enjoy a great cause and enjoy pets. Speaking for those who cannot speak for themselves. For Inside Out, I'm Hannah Davis. The gala will be held at 5 o'clock on Saturday, April 21st. You can buy your tickets at the website below. A Minot State professor has received the second prestigious award of his career. Dan Kahn, a professor of teacher education, was named Professor of the Year for 2016 and 2017. He also received the award in 2014. The award is voted on by the Student Government Association to honor dedicated faculty at Minot State. Khan is not only dedicated to the students at MSU, but also to the Minot community. He serves on the Men's Winter Refuge Board and the Minot Symphony Board. Khan is also a part of the initiative Locally Exceptional Readers. The program is used to distribute books to kids pre-K through sixth grade in the Minot area. An MSU alumni and former student athlete has proven himself in the professional sports world. Nathan Rauhauser, a 2017 Management Information Systems graduate and former, former football player, has found his home with the Oakland Raiders. Rauhauser is currently one of the desktop support, support specialists with the organization. After completing a summer internship in 2016, Rauhauser was offered an official position with the Raiders. Rauhauser thanks Minot State for his success by saying, What I learned at MSU has been applicable in various places within my job. Between being a part of the football team, doing a work study with the IT department, and the great instructors and classes, I feel like I was about as prepared as anyone could be for their first career after college. So it's great to see Minot State alum excelling, especially with professional organizations like the Raiders, like Nathan is. Definitely. It's always fun to see Beavers go on and seeing what they're doing in the future. And I know that Nate's working with the technical side of things, and actually our broadcast department is going to work with the technical side of things at the zoo this weekend. Yeah. So today I have the wonderful Jen Clean with me to talk about the party for the planet this Sunday. So Jen, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Sometimes those Beavers come back to visit too. So. Definitely. It used to be a <laughs> host on this show and now you're in the other seat. Thanks so, for having me here. Yes, thank you so much for being here. So Party for the Planet is a Sunday at the zoo. What is this event? So Party for the Planet is a way to celebrate Earth Day and it is a very popular um, among the zoo community throughout the nation. This is our first one of doing it on Earth Day. The reason we decided to go ahead and, and uh, take it on, we had contacted 
If you know the gentleman who plays Theodore Roosevelt in Medora all summer long, mm -hmm. his name is Joe Wigand, and he does an amazing job portraying the 26th president. Of course, we're named after Theodore Roosevelt, and so I reached out to him to talk to us uh, during the centennial year in 2021. Uh, and he said, absolutely, but can I come earlier? Can I come and celebrate Earth Day with you? And so we're not going to say no to the president. Right. So we <laughs> built this event around him. And so it's a great way to support conservation in the community. Wow. So how did you guys even come up with this event? I know this is your first one being on Earth Day. How did you guys come up with this idea? We just kind of started building. So we are going to have our bounce house out. We have an eco maze that we put together so kids can make the choice between is it better to use your Tupperware or a disposable bag and you make that choice and then you can find your way through the maze. Um, we invited some of those earth-friendly um, facilities here in Minot. Um, Calyx, is a, they're doing a great job of um, recycling and they can help you get started on a home recycling program because sometimes that can be overwhelming. <laughs> you mentioned a bounce house. What else can people expect walking into this event? Um, well, it's, you know, we're just, uh, we have summer fever, you know, and <laughs> spring fever, um, and the animals do too. So, it, you know, it's a great place just to be during the uh, spring season. Um, they're all very active. It's a great uh, weather point for um, even our cold weather animals. Um, but then some of those summer ones are starting to come back out too, and we've missed them. And um, so just the traditional things that you do see at the zoo. What do you want to get out of Party for the Planet this weekend, personally? Um, the Roosevelt Park Zoo hosts um, several events throughout the year that all pertain to conservation. Um, this year we are going to focus our efforts on the black-footed ferret. Um, they're actually, they used to be found in North Dakota and they're not anymore. They're extinct in North Dakota and they've been reintroduced in South Dakota. Okay. So we are, um, any of these events are raising money um, toward a certain cause and this year it's the black-footed ferret and so it's just exciting to get everybody on board for something like that. That's amazing. Thank you so much for being with us today, Jen, and I hope you have a great time with this event. I will see you there because I'll be a part of the crew that will I be love playing it. the music. And we're so, glad that you're going to be there. That's part of the party, right? Definitely. <laughs> so I'll definitely see you there Sunday. Sounds good. Thank you. Up next, we have Lane Sarston with Ryan Fila with more on the huge final play of the year. Baseball keeps these winds rolling in, and it's finally warmer than Magic City after these underwriters. American Trophies for all your screen printing and embroidery needs. Artmain, offering custom frames, art supplies, and jewelry. Buffalo Wings and Rings, a sports restaurant experience located in South Minot. Badlands Bar and Grill, located on 31st Avenue in Minot. Fiance, with all your prom and bridal needs, located in downtown Minot. KCJB 910 AM, Minot's news and information station. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, sports. KIZZ FM Z94, playing today's hit music. Mix 99.9, Minot's music mix. Happy Joe's Pizza and Ice Cream, serving the Midwest since 1972. KRRZ, 1390 AM, Minot's Classic Hits. KZPR 105.3 FM, Minot's Rock Station. Jacobson Music, bringing music to the Northern Plains since 1980. KYYX, Kicks 97.1, bringing Minot country since 1977. MSU Beavers Hockey, online info at msubeavers.com. Qdoba, easy, on time, full of flavor. MSU Theater Department, year-round entertainment. Forward Communication, connecting professionals in the Midwest. MSU Bookstore, for all your campus needs. The Red and Green, MSU student-run newspaper. 
Magic City Hoagies, locally owned sandwich shop located in Southwest Minot. Spicy Pie, pizza, grinders, beer. The Minot Masonic Lodge, good men working to be better. Taco John's, offering fresh tacos, burritos, nachos, and breakfast. Drive-In Financial, connecting faith and finances. PMQ Entertainment, performing at weddings, proms, and dances. The Pursuit, creating a place in Minot where everyone is welcome. Mouse River Players, community theater since 1971. H Bar B Construction for all your oil field needs. So, you want to be successful. Well, in order to be successful, you're going to need the right tools. Back in ancient times, we used these. They were heavy, bulky, and worst of all, sharp. Nowadays, we have this. Small, sleek, fits in your pocket, and most importantly, you can't accidentally cut yourself. So now that you have the tools you need, you're gonna need the skills to use those tools. So what Minot State did was make a concentration based purely on social media. Offering classes from graphic design to video, you'll be prepared and ready to take anything that gets thrown at you. Anybody can do it, regardless of major. So, oh, hold on, just gotta tweet out this selfie really quick. Minot State social media concentration. That social media concentration that you just saw is going to be offered right here in the broadcasting department. With me now, though, is one of the busiest guys on campus here, going out strong in his last semester, Ryan Fila. Thank you for coming on the show today, Ryan. Of course. Uh, so you're getting involved in something that's a, a little new for you, uh, the Much Ado About Nothing, Shakespeare. That's, that's a big jump. How's, Definitely new. How's that been? Uh, it's been good. It's been even more of a challenge because it's not not regular English, like <laughs> remembering the lines isn't just like yeah. remembering a uh, normal conversation. So is this just an extra, extra challenge? Extra challenge. <laughs> What's, uh, what, what drew you to it? What got you into it? I've been watching the play since I've been here for like the last two and a half years. I just enjoy going and I don't see why you wouldn't. I mean, it's free entertainment. You get in free as a student. They actually put a lot of time into it. I was oh, really yeah, surprised. Yeah. Um, but I had, after like some of the summer theater plays and other productions, just thanking the cast. And this summer I was talking to Maddie Thompson in particular uh -huh. about how I could get involved into something. And Dan Fagan is actually in a lot of my classes. So oh, that's cool. he kind of just hooked it up from there. Cool. Um, how has uh, your athletics stuff, uh, like your athletic experience helps you with this? Has it helped at all or is this an entire new field for you? It's definitely helped in terms of like preparing for a game or for mm -hmm. the production, the actual night tonight. Um, one way that it's been a, very different is the preparation itself. Like uh, Dr. Eiley, the first couple nights was like, well, here's your stage, your script to read it. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, I just got to throw you to the walls. Yeah, like I have, I have no idea what's going on in the play itself. Mm -hmm. Like I had, I had no idea. So I was just reading these lines, real monotone, basically walking around, didn't really know what I was doing. Um, and it molded like all the way through, you know, you kind of, you pick up things you're like, oh, this is what this means. I mean, every night I was like, oh, that's something new. I didn't know that was even happening in the play. The first couple of nights, like, I thought I was a murderer, like, <laughs> and that's not the case. Like, I thought I killed somebody. Oh, wow. But uh, the transition through the process is very different than it was in sports. There's not somebody telling you, like, do this, do this, do this. It's all you discovering new things. Yeah, and creating uh, your own character. Exactly. Um, is it something you think about doing again now that you've gotten so into it? Yeah, actually, for sure. I really enjoyed it. Well, and Shakespeare being such a such a crazy thing to just jump right into, uh, as you mentioned earlier, that language is hard. Uh, but how is it working with such a big cast? There's over 20 people in this cast. Yeah, that's probably another thing that sports helped me with, especially playing football. With the, I mean, you got 100 guys in there managing the team. Um, 
It's been a lot in practice, especially in the beginning, we broke it up into the scenes and you only had so much of the cast there to put it together. And then as time went on, more people came in at once and we ran through the whole show and it's actually been pretty smooth. I mean, I don't have any <laughs> theater background to compare mm -hmm. it to, but I think it's ran pretty smooth. All righty. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, thank you for being on the show with us today, Ryan. Of course. Uh, that opens up tonight, folks, right here in Alshire Theater. theater. Uh, be there, 7.30 free if you're an MSU student. Blake, uh, for sports, we've got a lot going on. Uh, softball uh, in particular, the, they've got their senior day mm -hmm. coming up. Uh, tell me yeah, they're actually on the road uh, this weekend. They're going to South Earth, Minnesota, and uh, Sioux Falls. They play four games, so we'll see if uh, we can figure that out. All right. Uh, well, hopefully their senior day goes well. Um, we got a lot of talent on that roster, um, and then we'll be able to uh, go, move on to their next challenge in life. Yeah, for sure. The men's hockey team committed their third player for the next season. They announced it on Twitter yesterday. Connor Schuster, a minor North Dakota native who played in the SIJHL, will join the Beavers next season. The baseball team finally played their first home game of the season. They sure gave the fans a lot to cheer about, sweeping the two-game series against Bemidji State University. In Game 1, they pounded the Beavers 10-5 to with 10 hits, and in Game 2, they were just as good, cranking 16 hits, scoring 13 runs, and a 13-7 victory. With more on the story, Kyler Sharp is standing by with head coach Scotty Ewell. Minot State Baseball got things going early today with some pretty good pitching. The Beavers swept Bemidji State for their very first home games of the season. Joining me now is head coach Scott Ewell. Thanks for being here, coach. No problem. Coach, what was it like for you guys to finally be able to come home and be able to say, we played our first home games on the new and improved Corbett Field? Yeah, it was awesome. We've been on the road quite a bit this year, and um, it was really nice to sleep in our own beds, wake up, and get out there. So the field is looking awesome. We finally got the, the snow off it and uh, got a couple nice wins today, which is good. You guys had a pretty impressive performance by Damar. He had eight strikeouts in seven innings in the first game. How, how far has he come along this season? Yeah, he's been really good for us. He, he's our, he was our number one going into the season, and um, he, he's struggled a little bit at times, but he's, uh, he's pulled it together when he needs to, and uh, he's come up big, and today was a, was a nice start for him. What would you say is the biggest uh, change from last season to this season? Um, you know, we've, I, I don't know if there's been a huge change. I think we've, uh, we've been a little bit more consistent this year um, as far as our ceiling hasn't been, our, our, our floor hasn't been as low as it was last year. Uh, we've come out, we've competed every game, and um, we've been able to, to handle some, some slow starts and, and get us in, in the games and, and win them late. You're sitting third in the conference right now. Is that a huge confidence booster for you guys going into playoffs or even coming to the tail end of the season? Yeah, we, we still got 14 games left, so um, I think we, we got a chance to win this thing. So we're going to go out there every game and, uh, and see if we can't put a nice run together and, and, uh, and, and hopefully win a regular season for us. And you, guys, and you said, you mentioned me earlier, you guys beat Mankato three times. That, that's huge for this team. Has that, have you guys done that before this season? Uh, it, Nobody's really done that against Mankato. So um, that right now Mankato is 20 and three in the in, in the regular season. We're the only three uh, three three games they've lost. So um, they're a really good team, and it shows that we could play with anybody. And um, I think it was it was a really fun series. Our guys were ready to play, and um, I think it shows that we're ready for a, a stretch run here. Well, congrats on the win today. Congrats on being third in the conference, I mean, that's, that's a huge accomplishment, and be even beating Mankato. So that's great. Uh, th thanks for being here, Coach. Absolutely, my pleasure. We're going to send it back to Blake with some more sports. The pair of wins pushed the Beavers' record to 20-11 and overall and 18-3 and in conference play. It also extends their winning streak to four games in a row. The Minnesota Wild are on the brink of elimination after a 2-0 loss on home ice to the Winnipeg Jets on Tuesday night. The Wild head into a hostile environment for Game 5 tomorrow night as they will look to keep their season alive. They will have to do it without their leading playoff scorer, Zach Parise, who is out for the playoffs with a torn sternum. Puck drop is set for 6.30 on Fox Sports. Other games in the NHL, the Boston Bruins head to Toronto for Game 4 of that series. Boston leads 2-1. The Capitals and the Blue Jackets probably the most entertaining series of the first round. Columbus leads that 2-1, and all three games have been in overtime. The Minnesota Twins and Cleveland Indians just wrapped up their mini two-game series in Puerto Rico. After dropping the first game 6-1, the Twins needed 16 innings to prevail 2-1. to 
Outfielder Ryan Lamar finished the game 3 for 4 and he drove in the winning run in the bottom of the 16th. The Twins sit first in the Central Division with an 8 and 5 record, a half game up on the Indians. The Minnesota Timberwolves are heading back home down 0-2 to the NBA leading Houston Rockets. Although the T-Wolves only lost by 3 points in game 1, the Rockets showed last night why, are th why they are the team to beat in the West with a, a do dominating 102-82 victory. Game 3 will be Saturday night as the home team will look to get back in the series. Andrew Wing has led the team in points in both games. Tip-off is Saturday night is 6.30. Um, the Twins uh, got a big win, but the Timberwolves, uh, that's the talk of the, the Twin Cities right now. First time in the playoffs since 2003-2004, but boy, the Houston Rockets just look so good. Yes. After that first game, James Harden was on, and I know that the second game, James Harden wasn't shooting as well, but they still won by such a huge league, and that just shows you how powerful my team is. <laughs> so I'm very proud. I'm very excited to watch that third game. Yeah, they're, they're, they're really strong, too. They got so many pieces, too. Yep. Thanks, Blake. Yeah, unfortunately, Briley, those timber puffs, uh, they're, they're not doing so hot. Um, it's nice to see them back in the playoffs. But uh, some more good news for you. Uh, yes. We've got some Texas weather up here. Uh, at least that's what I've heard from Hannah. Yep. Uh, Hannah, what do you got for us? Yeah, you know, it's last week I was excited because I wasn't forecasting my first snowstorm. And now I'm excited <laughs> because, well, I got some good weather for you guys this week. Hey. I'm excited. Uh, we, we've seen a little bit of that already this week as baseball mm -hmm. got to play for their first time at home today. Yes. And as uh, Blake mentioned earlier, they managed to pick up the W. Uh, and, but I'd like to see it just get a little warmer. <laughs> oh, well, I got good news for you. I'll take you over to our current temperatures right now. Although it's not, it's still not quite up to average, it is still beautiful out here today. We have uh, some 40s right here in Minot, but everywhere else we're seeing 50s. And it's really true to what it looks like. We don't have very strong win winds anywhere in the state that I noticed. Everything's below 10 miles an hour, so it actually feels like the temperature that it looks. And I know in Minot I was really excited because the sun finally came out. It was cloudy and foggy all day long. And just before the newscast started, I finally saw that sun came at come out. So I'm really happy. but. I wouldn't mind being in Grand Forks right now, not gonna lie. Normally I feel like Fargo or Dickinson has the best temperatures, but can't complain. And our women's team will be playing in Smithville, Missouri. Last week our men's team actually played there, but now it will be our women's team. And uh, it's they have some 50s in their temperatures, not as nice as that first day looked for the men's team last week. But at least the men's team didn't have to see any rain. Unfortunately, they may have to play in some, a light drizzle on Saturday, so hopefully that doesn't get them too off their game. I'm sure all the Missouri teams and all, the, all those southern women's golf teams will be suffering in those 50 degree temperatures, but our team, I'm sure, will be doing just fine with those 50 degree temperatures. So good luck to them, of course. And then here is our seven day forecast. If I could describe it in one word, Wow, you, you really can't ask for much better than this, especially with what we've been having. Uh, we have sun heading from Friday, Saturday, and Sundays, and some 50s, 60s, 64. So we really can't complain about that. And the low temperatures really aren't that bad either. We do get a little low Sunday night, 35, so you might want to bundle up a little bit, but it's nothing we can't deal with. And then, unfortunately, we do have some partly sunny weather. Not We can't have the sunshine for the whole week, but it still stays warm, so that's something to look forward to. And Lane, I know you said you were wanting some warm temperatures. I got it for you on Thursday. It says 72 degrees. You know, I, I don't think that it's going to get to actually 72. I think it's going to be a little lower than that, just because I don't trust Minot. I'm sorry to say it, I don't trust Minot. I don't think we're gonna get 72 degrees in April, but I do think that we will have some 60 degree weather at the very least. And I mean, we can't complain about that. We've been having snow up until recently. So Lane and Briley, uh, I know this isn't quite exactly what you wanted to see, but I mean, Beggars can't be choosers. This is this is the best we're gonna get right now. <laughs> hey, you said 72 degrees Thursday. That's fine with me. So yeah. I will definitely be in a dress next show. So I'm excited for that warm weather. Yeah. If I could get away with it, I'd wear shorts. But that's, that's not quite the professional attire. 
right. And uh, yeah, no, I don't think anybody wants to see me in shorts on live TV. <laughs> All those bright legs. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We'd be blinding everyone from home. For sure. It'll definitely <laughs> at least be warm enough for us to have those uh, nice summer clothes to wear. But yeah, I don't. I just don't think it'll be 72, you guys. I'm sorry. Well, it's, at least it's warmer. So what are you going to do this weekend now that there's a little bit more sun? Um, well, I actually work every weekend, but I will be relieved that I don't have to carry my equipment in the snow, so that'll be really nice. And can't complain about that, you guys? Right. Well, I'm just going to be studying and yeah. finishing up papers. I mean, since graduation's right around the corner, I have to really just stay on yeah, my You're going to be leaving us here. I know. Oh, it's so sad to think about. We're just going to uh, x -nay that one and just forget about it. We still got two <laughs> more episodes with, yes. with Riley Boyce. But what about your weekend, though? We have, we have to hear about yours. <laughs> uh, this weekend, there's there's not going to be a whole lot, uh, really. It's uh, mostly like, studying and stuff. Uh, one of the curses and blessings of being a broadcasting major, as we all know here, is that throughout the semester it's pretty light, but then we get towards finals and we just get hammered Boom, with projects. just like that. So I'm going to be uh, working on my uh, all my projects coming up, my papers, so lots of time in front of a computer screen. Uh, but I've got a nice balcony at my apartment, oh. uh, so I'll be able to pop out on there and just take it easy. Okay, so I mean that's great that we finally have sun though, so I'm very happy about that. Hannah, thank you so much for the weather. I'm glad to hear about that great news. Yeah, um, thank you Ryan Fila, MSU uh, student athlete and actor, uh, for coming on and giving us a little bit of a preview of Much Ado About Nothing. Yep, Jen Clean, thank you so much for being here. She is the Minot Zoo Crew Executive Director, and she will be hosting that party for the planet this Sunday at the zoo. It starts at noon, so don't forget, and go out and just have fun. We'll be there, and we'll be playing music, be and yep, we'll just have a great time. Yeah. Um, before we take off on you folks, we just want to make sure uh, we, we get it right here that uh, the softball team will be playing here at home this weekend against Winona. It is the senior day, so make sure you come out, show some support for all of our seniors. They've put in a great commitment. You being a former athlete yourself, you know it, it's quite the commitment. Um, and for that, though, I'm Lane Sarston. And I'm Briley Boyce. We'll see you next week.